This build is Trample Storm. We're combining the survivability of Stoneclaw, the fun of Trample Slide, and the power of Tornadoes into one hilariously fun build. Some people had concerns about the possibility of the damage from Bulwark being nerfed, which inspired me to try and figure out a different way to pump out that damage. Now without further ado, let's get into the build. For our skills, we're using Blood Howl, Earth and Bulwark, Trample, Petrify, Storm Strike, and Tornado. Blood Howl, Trample, and Storm Strike are all spirit generators. We'll spam all three in order to be able to cast our tornadoes constantly. Petrify is a great source of CC and will save you in a tight spot. We spam Earth and Bulwark off cooldown to make sure that we always have Fortify and a shield up. Every time we're casting Trample, because of the aspect of Trampled Earth, as well as the aspect of the Aftershock and Raging Landslide, we're casting several landslides, which all have a chance to proc our Nature's Fury passive. This means that we're getting free tornadoes and free lightning storms constantly. As we spam our tornado, we also have a chance to get free landslides. When we use our storm strike, we have a chance of getting free earth spikes. When we use earth and bulwark, we have a chance to get free cyclone armors. When we use our trample, we have a chance to get free hurricanes. And when we use our petrify, we have a chance to get free cataclysms. This is all due to the 30% chance of nature's fury. For our skill tree, we'll be going storm strike, leading to fierce storm strike, maxing out landslide and going to raging landslide, maxing out tornado, and going to Raging Tornado. We'll grab one point in Heart of the Wild and two points in Wild Impulses, as well as three points in Predatory Instinct. For our defensive tree, we'll be taking Earth and Bulwark and Preserving Earth and Bulwark. We'll also be taking Blood Howl and Innate Blood Howl. For our passives here, we'll do Ancestral Fortitude, leading to a maxed out Vigilance. We'll skip the Companion Tree altogether, and under the Wrath skills, we'll be taking Trample, leading to Savage Trample. For our passives here, we'll be taking Elemental Exposure, one point in Charged Atmosphere, and three points in Bad Omen. We'll also be taking one point in Neurotoxin, one point in Toxic Claws, and three points in Envenom. For our ultimate, we'll be taking Petrify, and both points. For our passives here, we'll be taking one point in Defiance, one point in Natural Disaster, and maxing out Resonance. We'll also be taking one point in Quick Shift, and two points in Heightened Senses. For our Keystone passive, we'll be taking Nature's Fury. On our Paragon boards, the first lift we're going to grab is Exploit. The first board that we're going to attach is Heightened Malice. On our Heightened Malice board, we're going to grab Shapeshifter as our glyph. We'll move left, and the second board that we'll attach is Thunderstruck. On the Thunderstruck board, we're grabbing Undaunted as our glyph. Moving back across to the right, we'll attach the Inner Beast board, and we'll be grabbing the Spirit Glyph. Moving down from here, we'll attach the Ancestral Guidance board, and for the glyph, we'll grab Fang and Claw. For our Spirit Boons, we'll grab Wariness, Avian Wrath, Energize, Calm Before the Storm, and Masochistic. If you decide to try and utilize the extra damage reduction from the injured state, you can remove Masochistic and take Swooping Attacks instead. For our gear, we'll use Tempest Roar, Aspect of Mending Stone, Aspect of Trampled Earth, Aspect of Disobedience, Ballistic Aspect, or you can change this out for Ghost Walker if you're doing harder content, Storm Chaser's Aspect, Symbiotic Aspect, Aspect of Natural Balance, Aspect of Retaliation, and Aspect of Aftershock. For our gems, We'll be using Emerald for the weapon, Ruby for the armor. If you're doing the Injured State version, then you'll grab Sapphire here instead, and Skulls on the accessories. For the stats on our gear, on the helmet we'll be taking cooldown reduction, basic skill attack speed, total armor, and maximum life, or for the Injured version, we'll take Barrier Generation. For the chest armor, we'll be taking damage reduction while fortified, damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned, total armor, and maximum life. For Injured, we can replace maximum life, with damage reduction from close enemies. On our gloves, we'll take attack speed, critical strike chance, ranks of landslide, and ranks of tornado. Critical damage and lucky hit chance are fine here as well. For our pants, we'll take damage reduction while injured, damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned, damage reduction while fortified, and maximum life. For the injured version, we can take damage reduction from close enemies. For our boots, we'll take damage reduction while injured, total armor while werewolf, dodge chance, and all stats. Move speed and spirit cost reduction are also fine here. For our amulet, we'll take damage reduction while injured, cooldown reduction, ranks of the Envenom passive, and damage reduction while fortified. There are many good stats you can get here, so just make sure you get something useful. On our rings, we'll take vulnerable damage, critical strike damage, critical strike chance, and maximum life. For the injured version, we can take barrier generation instead of maximum life. On our weapon, we'll take vulnerable damage, critical strike damage, four skill damage, and all stats. Feel free to take anything useful instead of the all stats. On our offhand, we'll take critical strike chance, cooldown reduction, damage reduction while fortified, and damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned. Other useful stats you could take here would be 
basic skill attack speed, or barrier generation. Some final considerations for this build, I think that it's a lot of fun to play, and as you can see in the video I was able to clear a tier 75, and because this build can take advantage of the injured state that I showed in my stone claw video, that means it can technically clear all the way up through tier 100. However, in the current version of the game, I think the damage is a little bit lower than stone claw. Typically I take the time to refine a build like this and make it as good as possible, but I'm currently super excited for another build that I have in mind, so I'm going to put this build out there for you guys and see what you do with it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I can't wait to show you what I have in store. Until then, don't forget to subscribe, and come hang out with Daddy Druid on the Twitch stream! You come here often?